What's up guys, my name's Brandon and today Apple released iOS 18 beta 4 to register developers and soon to public beta testers. Now along with this release, Apple also released the fourth beta for iPadOS 18, watchOS 11, macOS Sequoia, tvOS 18, and visionOS 2. But of course in this video we are talking only about iOS and iPadOS 18 beta 4. So let's start with the size of this update, it came in at just under 1.4 gigabytes on my iPhone 15 Pro Max, which was coming from the public beta, aka developer beta 3.5. So a relatively large update here for this fourth beta. Let's go ahead and check out the build number. So if we go into our settings, general about 18.0, we can see that the new build number is 22A5316J. So we went from an I at the end of the build number in the previous beta to a J at the end of the build number here in beta four, which is quite interesting. Now, if we go back and check out the modem firmware, we did also receive an update here. So it went from 2.14.01 on the 15 series to 2.15.01 here in beta four. All right, so now what's new here in iOS 18 beta four? Now, the first thing I want to start off with is that no, we do not have any Apple intelligence features here in iOS 18 beta four. We are still awaiting those. Of course, the new Siri 2.0 update is not coming until a later date in 2025, but we are going to see some Apple intelligence features later on this year, and we could see those as early as beta five when that gets released. But here in beta four, no Apple intelligence features. So let's go ahead and talk about what's new here. So the first thing is inside of our settings, and this is kind of a redundant change, but if you go to your settings and go down towards the bottom, we have a new toggle down here for iCloud. And just for comparison, you can see beta three on the left, we did not have an iCloud section. So I guess, you know, at first this does seem like a redundant change because we can access iCloud by simply tapping on our profile picture up at the top, but this takes you right into the iCloud section, whereas before on previous versions, you had to go into your Apple account and then to iCloud. So this kind of just removes that extra step, but everything in here is the same. However, you might have noticed that we have that new subscriber iCloud animation right there. So this seems to be a server side updates because this was on beta three as well. But if we go into our iCloud section here, you can see that little animation that shows the subscriber iCloud badge, but that was not there before. So it seems like Apple just added that today, but it was showing up on beta three as well, which means that it was most likely just a server side little minor tweak. The stocks application has a new app icon. So it's now darker and the line indicating the kind of price action for the stock is now thicker and the lines in the background are less opaque. Now we also have a few changes in the control center and on the lock screen. So if we go into our control center and go to add a control, you'll notice that we have have a few new glyph icons here. So underneath of clock, we have a new glyph icon for alarm. So you might have to look closely, but we have a change there in alarm. It's no longer filled in. The timer outline looks to be a little bit thicker. And then for stopwatch, again, it used to be filled in. Now it is not. It's more of an outline design. And then if we keep going down, we have a few changes here as well. And you'll notice that it's not as laggy as it was in the previous beta as well. So when you scrolled through here in beta three, it was quite laggy, but it's not as laggy here in beta four. Now, the next thing you'll notice is that underneath of home before we had a music toggle where it was just a quick action to open up the music application. But as you can see here in beta four, that is now missing. So we no longer have the open music quick toggle in the control center or on the lock screen. And then if we keep on scrolling, you'll see that we have something new under remote. And this appears to be potentially a bug, at least the name and the icon are bugged out, but it's just a question mark there. And it says Bluetooth power toggle. So that is is new and then also under shortcuts we have a change here as well so before we just had this little circle for shortcuts now it's a much bigger rectangle for shortcuts and it says shortcut across it and then we also have a change down here under motor accessibility so if we go under motor accessibility we have a new toggle for eye tracking with a new neat little glyph icon right there with an eye and it moving and then like i mentioned the music toggle is also missing from the lock screen so if you go to customize your lock screen controls right here you will no longer see the music toggle and even if you search for it it no longer comes up 
like it was in beta 3. It was actually just introduced in beta 3, but it was removed here in beta 4 for some reason. And then all the other control center changes I just talked about also apply to the lock screen toggles right here. However, you can see that shortcut now has a missing glyph icon, so nothing shows up inside of the circle. Now, if we head back to our home screen and go over to the app library and then go down to the bottom where we have our hidden folder. So if you have any hidden albums, you will notice that we have a new look for that hidden section inside of the app library. So before it was completely covered with just a eye with a slash through it, but now it kind of just shows, you know, kind of blank icons right here indicating that the applications are there, but they are hidden. And then we also have some much needed changes to the home screen when it comes to customizing the app icon. So if you go into customize here, if you go to edit and then to customize. So now with beta four, automatic icons now show light and dark icons based on if you're in dark or light mode. So now if you go to automatic, you'll see that my icons are in light mode. But if I go into dark mode here system wide, it changes my app icon to the dark mode version and if I go back you can see it changes it to light so this was not working at all for me in beta 3 or any previous beta so it's great to see that it's now working based on your system theme and you'll also notice that the dock and the widgets are no longer stuck in light mode if you use the dark mode with light app icon so what I mean is if I go to light right here so if I choose light icons but I put my device in dark mode the dark mode uh, widgets will remain before this dock and the widgets were stuck in light mode, but you can see that they are now showing up in dark mode. And you can see we have the dark widgets here as well, even though we are in light mode for the icons. And of course, if I change this out of dark mode, it goes back to the light mode version for the dock and for the widgets. Also new in beta four is that we now have RCS supports for more carriers, including Rogers and also for some carriers in the UK. And there could be even more as well. So it seems like RCS support is starting to get more widespread as these betas go on. So if you did not have access to RCS before beta four, go ahead and check and see if you do have RCS available now. Now a much needed change here in iOS 18 beta four is related to the iPhone mirroring feature with Mac OS Sequoia. So if you update your phone and if you update to the fourth beta of Mac OS Sequoia, you can now change the window size of iPhone mirroring, which is the number one complaint I had with iPhone mirroring in the previous beta. So this is much better now that you can change the window size. If we head into our settings and go to camera and then to preserve settings, we have a new toggle here for controls mirroring. Menu. So before we only had creative controls, but now there's a new toggle for controls menu and it says preserve the previously used camera tool when expanding the controls menu rather than showing the list of camera tools. Also in our settings, if we go to accessibility and then down to touch and then into assistive touch and we customize the top level menu, there's a new option in the top level menu for type to Siri. So that was not there in beta three. Also, there are new CarPlay wallpapers. So we have eight new CarPlay wallpapers here with beta four, which is great to see. And they did remove the old ones, of course, for storage sake, but we do have new wallpapers now if you are a CarPlay user. And then also in CarPlay with beta four, the album artwork for Apple Music appears to be bigger than it was in previous betas. And if you install iPadOS 18 beta four, there's a new setup video called Siri is ready. So this was found by Aaron P613. And we have that kind of the Siri 2.0 UI for this setup video, which looks pretty awesome. Now, as far as bug fixes go, the first thing I want to mention is that screen time appears to be working now for those who had issues in beta three, the public beta or any previous version of iOS 18. So if you did have issues with screen time, check it now with beta four, because it could very well be resolved for you. And then if we check out the release notes from Apple for beta four, they did mention a few bug fixes in here as well. So the first one is a fix for the icon tent slider knob. So if we go into edit right here and go to customize and go to tent the slider knob, which is this right here before in beta three, it said that it might not update to the selected color on the first use 
after boot. So you would have to go out of here and then back in for this to work properly. But that has been fixed here with beta four. It should work after the very first try after a boot without issue. And by the way, this whole section here for customizing the app icons is a lot better, a lot less buggy in beta four. Like for example, a lot of times before on beta three and previous versions, I would mess around with the tent, but then I would go to switch to dark mode icons, but the icons would stay with the tent color on them. But that is fixed here in beta four as well. There's also a fix inside of our settings search and help Apple improve search. So before this was non-functional, but now it's working. And if you have this toggled on, it will actually help Apple improve search that was not working in beta three. And then as far as known issues go, there are a couple of known issues I wanted to point out. So they say that in the phone application, the keypad search results always display a video icon, although tapping the icon places audio calls. And here's what that looks like. So if you search for something from the keypad, it will show like a FaceTime video icon, even though it will actually do an audio call, not a FaceTime video call. So that is a known issue that Apple is working on. And there's also a known issue for the mail badge count. It might not update until the mail application is launched. So that bug is still present in beta four. And then as far as other bugs in iOS 18 beta four, the only thing I've been seeing mentioned is that RCS, the setting might be there for those on Rogers and other carriers that did not have access to RCS before beta four, but it's not actually working. And it also doesn't show in carrier settings. So it seems like the toggle is there, but it might not actually be working as of yet. So maybe the carrier themselves need to activate it on their end. And here was another bug I had in beta three that I assume will be fixed in beta four, but I will follow up with you guys in a later video to tell you for sure if this bug has been fixed where you do not have access to your audio or video controls while on a phone call or a FaceTime call. And if you have any bugs or issues that I did not mention in this video, just let me know in a comment down below the issue or the bug that you are facing so we can kind of all come together and see if that is a widespread issue or not. It's great to know for these videos. Of course, you can also report that in the feedback application. But anyways, let's move on to the performance and the battery life. So I did go ahead and run a Geekbench test shortly after updating to beta four. And you can see we scored a 2787 on the single core and a 6899 on the multi-core score. And if we compare that score to previous runs, we did score higher than the previous beta, just barely on the single core, but it was a decent bit better on the multi-core score. So you can see higher than the previous public beta, AKA developer 3.5, which is a great sign. But of course we can't say for sure if the performance is better or worse in this update until we've actually used it for a few days or even a couple of weeks. So as you guys know, I will follow up with you guys and tell you how the overall performance is in my Apple weekly series, which I upload every single Saturday. And then as far as the battery life goes, of course it is way too early to tell how battery life is just yet, but it seems to be holding up pretty good. We are at 73% right here as of 319 and you can go back to the beginning of this video to see what my battery was at the start and kind of do the math to see how the battery life is on beta 4 but i would assume that battery life will be better with beta 4 but of course we'll have to wait and see and i will update you guys in apple weekly on saturday and then finally let's talk about what to expect next from apple but before we do that we need to point out the elephant in the room here and that is that this update this beta 4 was a surprise to get this week. I was not expecting iOS 18 beta for this week because for the past two years with iOS 17 and iOS 16, Apple went almost three weeks before releasing beta four after beta three. So for Apple to release this a week ahead of schedule was quite surprising, but that's why Apple is full of surprises. The, the last time they did this was with iOS 15. So it was a nice surprise to get beta four ahead of schedule. Now, with that being said, what can we expect moving forward? So I do think that we're gonna see iOS 18 beta five, two weeks from now. So we are going to be on a two week schedule still. We are not quite at the weekly release schedule just yet. So two weeks from today would put us at August 6th. So I would assume that the next iOS 18 
beta will be on the week of August 5th, most likely right there on August 6th. And then for those on the public beta, when can you expect to see the next public beta release? So I would expect the next public beta tomorrow on Wednesday the 24th. So Apple typically releases the public betas between 24 and 48 hours after the developer beta. It's usually 24 hours, so that's why I would expect it this week and most likely on Wednesday the 24th. And of course, expect that to have the same build number here as beta 4, the developer beta 4. And it's going to be the same next time we get a release on the week of August 5th. And for those wondering, no, we did not revert back to the big emoji keyboard that we saw with the original developer beta 3. So it's still the same as we see on the public beta where we have the smaller emoji and we no longer have the Memoji stickers available in the emoji picker down here, which I feel like is a step backwards. I liked how it was in beta three. Also, we can no longer search for our, you know, pets or our people, you know, the stickers. We can no longer search for those here anymore like we could in beta three. So Apple still could revert back to what we saw with the original beta three with this emoji keyboard, but that is not here in beta four. It is just like it was in the public beta. So that is iOS 18 beta four, a relatively minor update, but I would still expect to see some Apple intelligence features in the coming weeks and months because we are expected to be able to beta test at least some of the Apple intelligence features as Apple said on their website. Of course, the new Siri again is not coming until 2025, but we are going to see and be able to beta test some of the Apple intelligence features this summer. So we'll have to stay tuned for that. And of course, you guys will have to keep it locked to the channel to see when those new features come about. But if you guys enjoyed this episode, as always, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future iOS 18 videos just like this one. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.